the time. That is good. The devil is bad. All the time. All the time. That is bad. So don't confuse the two. Don't. A lot of people do, don't they? They confuse the two. It's amazing what people blame God for. And it's amazing what they give the devil credit for. Amen. Don't shut me down while I'm preaching good. Well, it's good to see you all tonight. We want to thank especially River of Life Church for once again hosting us. Thank you, Pastor Mike and Pastor Rachel. And Pastor Thank you for, for uh, just being great hosts every spring and every fall. Yes. And uh, I know we, from the town, over in Bloomington, Noma, love coming over here uh, every spring and fall and getting together with our brothers and sisters in the Lord and in the Grace Fellowship Ministries. And, and we truly, you know, consider this family. Yes. And uh, we all are family in the Lord. And it's just great to get the family together. We used to have family reunions. I don't know if anybody does that anymore, but we don't. <laughs> and uh, my family, I should say, don't. So this is kind of like a family reunion. Yeah, and it's just good to get together. And, uh, it's, 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 you know, there's ministry, like Pastor Bob said, not just during the praise and worship, and the uh, preaching and teaching of the Word, but before and after. Yes. All right? Before and after the worship services. Uh, we're ministering to one another. We're encouraging one another. You're prophesying uh, life and death and power of the tongue as you converse with one another. So uh, we, we are just part of what's happening here in this uh, in this place this week. Thank Pastor Mike for a wonderful word and teaching us about the glorious church last night. And the glorious, victorious, radiant church uh, is us. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, uh, before we jump into uh, the message tonight, it's going to be right in line with Pastor Mike's message uh, last evening, the title of my message is The Victorious Life, The Victorious Life. And many years ago, I wrote a book by that title, uh, The Victorious Life, and I've uh, got some resources back there, other books uh, in the back that I've written over the years. And uh, this is really the probably supreme call upon my life is victory, as you'll see here. So tonight's message is the hallmark message from the Victorious Life book. There's way more to it than this, but this is the groundwork that I'm going to be sharing with you here tonight. And uh, I would encourage you to run back after the worship service and get the remaining copies that I have of the Victorious Life. But uh, I just want to bless a young man that I believe in, that God's got great things for. And uh, so come on up here and uh, get the Victorious Life. Here is a complimentary copy for you, my friend. And uh, some other resources, a book that I really love, uh, it's entitled Live Life Big. I mean, you know we're supposed to live life big. Amen. 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 Yeah, we, we, you know, we've got plans uh, that are given to us by the good Lord. You know, we weren't just to occupy. We're to take over. That's right. I mean, we're to take over the planet. And uh, other religions have that goal. Why should we be uh, ashamed? Hey, we're here. Uh, as we'll see here tonight, Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of, of uh, all nations, all ethnic groups. So uh, that's not going to happen in some little back corner being ashamed of, of Christ. We need to live life big and uh, it has nothing to do with your waistline uh, <laughs> or your hair. Right? It has everything to do with your God and, and we're in order to impact life in a big way and that's a, that's a course for him. Who is, uh, who's got the closest birthday to today? Who's, who's, uh... Mine was yesterday. Yesterday? I think that's got it. <laughs> yesterday, it could be yesterday's birthday? Or two days ago. Two days, two days ago. ago. <laughs> you can even count. Right. <laughs> two days ago. All right. Is that Rodney back there? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, who, who's, who's nice again? Yeah. Dave, will you take this book back to, back to Rodney? God bless you for, uh, for that. All right. So, uh, Help yourself to other resources. I've got a book back there on parenting. How many parents are in the room? All right. How many of you ever wanted a book, a manual on parenting? Amen. You all are a bunch of liars. <laughs> I'm the only parent that wanted a book. So I wrote it. I wrote it. And 
And uh, I walk you through the different phases and seasons of parenting. I've been through three already. I'm entering into my fourth. And, uh, and I learned a lot about parenting from my parents. And they did a fantastic job. <laughs> Oh, my dad has white hair for a reason, Pastor Paul. <laughs> and my mom has no hair for it. No, I'm just kidding. She, she, she does have it. Thank God for that. But, uh, but anyway, uh, if you're if you're a parent, we need, we need to be counseled in the Word. Like Pastor Bob said, everything comes back to the Word. And uh, the Word of God has a lot to share us about how to parent our children through the various stages and seasons of their life. You don't parent teenagers like children. You don't parent young adults like teenagers. And you don't parent your Older adults, like young adults or teenagers or children, there's a shift that goes on. I walk you through that shift. And uh, most parents don't know about the shift, which is why you experience rebellion in your household. Your three children, all children love the Lord, they're not perfect children. But uh, I've learned sometimes the hard way is the best way to learn. You know, the school of hard knocks is the best teacher. So uh, that's a book back there for you as well. All right, so. Let the Lord lead you. All books, by the way, are ten dollars. All right, ten dollars in person, twenty dollars in order online. Uh, so we cover the cost of, of postage. All right. Okay, I want to share uh, tonight again a message that if you push my button, this is going to come out uh, more times than not. And uh, how many of you know that uh, God uses the good, the bad, and the ugly in your life for His own purposes? I love Romans eight twenty eight where He says. I can take all things and what work it out together for the good of those who what, who love the Lord. So in other words, God's not going to work out everything for everybody. Right. Amen. Amen. God's going to work it out for you because you love the Lord. Because a lot of people say, well, God's going to work it out. No, 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 sister, he's not. Because you're not living for the Lord. Come on now. So God can take anything in your life and work it out for, for, for your good and for his glory. And uh, he's certainly done that in my life. And this, this message in that book is kind of the product of that. There's some things I want to confess to you tonight, just to let you know a little bit about Pastor Tim. Those uh, people from the tab kind of know this about me. Uh, and one is, is, is a very simple principle, uh, and, and, that is, and that is this. I like to win. I, I, I absolutely do not like to lose. Uh, I would rather be a winner than be a loser any day of the week. That just is me. And because of my desire as a young uh, a teenager, as even a child, uh, I became very competitive in school, in grades, whatever it was. I just, I, you know, whether it was, you know, learning to play the piano or the guitar or whatever, I just wanted to be the best that I could be. I wanted to win. I wanted to succeed at that thing that I was was doing. I enjoy playing sports um, as a young adult and competing for the prize of victory. And one thing I learned really quickly as a result of being an athlete for many years is this. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. That's a part of life. And that's like life, isn't it? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But again, God can work it all out for His will and purposes. I hated losing. Uh, I wasn't a poor loser I didn't, you know, I wasn't a jerk when I lost, but I was like, okay, you beat me that time, you're not beating me the next time. And uh, so I developed, as a child, as a teacher, this is before I started preaching and all this stuff. This is who I was before God got a hold of me, okay? And God uses those things when he gets a hold of you. And so as a result of my passion and pursuit of victory, every game, every practice, Every loose ball, I'm beating you to it. I practice harder. I practice longer than all of my teammates and most of my competitors. As a result of that, the fruit of my, my practice and drive and getting up, getting in the gym early, staying late, I uh, became quite successful as an athlete. I uh, got to play for some championships, have some championships. Have the trophies, the ribbons, all the you know, medallions. This is before there were participation medals. Uh, you actually had to win the game to get a medal. Yeah. Somebody remember those days? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, you know, I wanted the medal. I wanted to win. I, I, I wanted to succeed in life. All right? Now, I believe now something about you and something, of course, about me. 
And that is this, that God has placed the desire within all of us to win, to succeed, and to be victorious in life. All right? And I'm not just talking about athletics. I'm talking about every area and every facet of our lives. God, I believe, designed us to win. God created us to conquer. God formed us for victory. God destined us to succeed. And God has crowned us in Christ, listen to this, to be champions in life. This is our God. The great God that we just got done worshiping. Every purpose, person, I believe, has been purposed by God to overcome every adverse situation and circumstance in life as the victor. Regardless of whether the adversity is physical, mental, emotional, relational, spiritual, or financial, we, children of God, are to be victorious over that thing. Anything less than victory is living beneath our means and, and beneath our inheritance as children of God. God speaks of His children in His Word, conquering, winning, triumphing in every area and arena in life. So let's look at it. God makes some promises. And I love the promises of God because they're for us. And they're for our children, they're for our grandchildren to, to, to grasp on through the hand of faith and not let go until we see the manifestation of that promise. So let's look at some promises uh, that God gives us for victory. Let's look at some in the Old Testament, then we'll, then we'll fast forward to the day. Just a few. 2 Chronicles 13, verse 8. I want to begin by saying this. The people of Judah, now the people of Judah were the children of God, right? The children of Israel. The people of Judah, here it is were victorious because they relied on the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Do you see that? Why were they victorious? Why did they win in life? Why did they succeed? Because they relied on the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah, there's a whole lot of people today not winning, not succeeding, not living the victorious life. And I'm talking about in the church. You wouldn't know by looking at their life if I didn't tell you whether they're a Christian or not. There's no difference. They're, they're all broke, bust, busted, disgusted, depressed, right? But the Bible says this, the people of God were victorious, and it tells us why. Because they what? They relied or, in other words, leaned on the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Proverbs 21, 31. I love this. If you don't Memorize a verse this week and you're memorizing scripture, are you not? Sure you are. You better be. Getting that in your heart. Here's one for this week. Can I give you one? I'm going to give you about 50 tonight, but let me give you one. This is it. We all can memorize this before we leave time. Proverbs 21 31. Here it is. Victory rests with the Lord. Can we all say that together? It's up on the screen. Victory rests. With the Lord. So if you need victory in any area of your life, where do we need to go? Lord. Lord. To the Lord. Amen. Now I have nothing against your doctor. I just don't like pain. <laughs> I have nothing against nurses. My, my mom was a nurse for 40 years. Nothing against the medical profession at all. But it's amazing. We'll lean on the hand of God. We'll lean on the hand, come on now, the hand in the flesh before even consulting the Lord or even uh, resting in the Lord. Right? Victory <coughs> rests with the Lord. So if you want victory, and victory is cold and it covers a lot, it's the umbrella of salvation, healing, deliverance, peace, joy, wisdom, all that stuff. It's where? It's in the Lord. It's in the Lord. Your victory is in the Lord. Some of us grew up in the old church where we used to have hymns. There was an old hymn we used to sing in the church called Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. I love that song. Even as a church, even in, well, I, I'm like, we sing a victory in Jesus? Because, again, I'm, I'm competitive. I'm, like, I'm, all about the, I'm all about winning. Let's sing that victory song. Yeah. Right. Well, I could 
because I didn't know as a child, you know what? God created not just Pastor Tim, but every single child of God to win in life. And I hope tonight I'm stirring you up, all right, uh, to, to kind of get, uh, how shall I say it, a little frustrated, maybe angry, at the devil's dealing in your life and say, no more. I am not going to be defeated by this thing anymore. Amen. When God has promised me victory in Jesus. Victory in the Lord. We're going to live the victorious life is what I'm getting at. First Corinthians 15, let's go to the, let's go to the New Testament. The Apostle Paul says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through who? Our Lord. Through the Lord. Yeah, so once again, where's our victory? It's in the Lord. Where do you go to find victory? You go to the Lord. You don't go to your cousin. You don't go to the hand of man or the hand of woman or, you know, or, the, or the things in this world. God can use those things. Amen. Come on now. Many times, nine times out of ten, your answer to prayer is a person. We don't go to people. We go to the Lord. People come to me and say, well, you know, Pastor, I got this thing. Do you think I should go see the doctor? Well, that's probably good. But before you go to the doctor, how about you go to the Lord? Right. Let's go to God first rather than go to God last. Because I don't know about you. Most of the people I know, Christians, I'm not about Christian people. They try everything and everyone else. Come on now. Before they, what? Try the Lord. Why don't you get God on the front end and then let him determine how he's going to work the miracle out? Come on now. Yeah. Maybe God's just going to touch you like he is tonight. We're going to have a prayer line up here. And maybe God's going to save you $50,000 in medical bills. <laughs> he's done it in my life. He's done it in pastor's life. Now again, God can use medical science. God can use counselors. Can you believe that, Pastor Bob? Can you believe it? A counselor? Yeah. God can even use a car sales. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking on my friends. Okay, 2 Corinthians 2.14. I love this. Thanks be to God who always leads us in what? On how to lose in life. How to be oppressed in life. How to be beat up by the devil. Well, God do, is doing this to me. Brought this sickness on me. No. No, 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 no. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Thanks be to God who always, that's 100% of the time, always leads us in what? Triumphal procession in Christ. Hallelujah. So again, if you're following the Lord, the Lord doesn't lose. Even when it looks like he's losing, he's winning. That's the whole thing. Just give him time. He was in the grave three days. It kind of looked like he lost. Remember that a couple weeks ago? Oh, resurrection thing? It looked like he was down and out, but it wasn't. He was just taking a he was just taking a break. Three days he came up, what? Hallelujah. With the keys, with the jewels, with the victory, with the trophy. Come on now. So if we follow him, uh, what are we gonna have? We're gonna what? We're gonna be led in triumph. We're gonna be led in victory. And I, you know what our response to this is? Thanks be to God. That's all we mean. Because you know what? We didn't do it. He gave it to us. He gave us the victory. He gave us the salvation. He gave us the healing. He gave us the prosperity. He gave us the peace. He gave us the wisdom. Right? Yeah. It's all from Him. And our response is, we don't earn it. We thank you for it. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this. Hallelujah. All right. Romans 7, 25. Let's look at this. A couple more. Just, just prime the pump here, all right? Thanks be to God. Here it is again. I love Paul. This is Paul. He can, I mean, he's putting the praise up front. He's like, before I, I just want to say thank you. Before I tell you what I'm going to thank you for. Isn't that good? I love you. Thanks be to God who delivers us through Jesus Christ our Lord. How many need deliverance tonight? I'm not maybe from a devil, from depression. 
and maybe discouragement, maybe debt, poverty, whatever it is we all from time to time. You know, we need deliverance. Deliver me from a, just a poor attitude, right? Whatever it is. Deliver me from my critical spirit. Sometimes stuff just gets on us, right? It's easy because we live in a filthy, dirty world. And we thank God. What? God deliver me from just my, my deliver me from just being numb. And, and he'll do it. And say, thank you. And you know what? Your spouse will thank you. Right? Yeah, mine does. <laughs> she says, thank you, Jesus. Right? Romans 8, 37. In all things, here it is again. In all things, we, talking about the children of God, are more than conquerors. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Through who? Christ. Through Buddha? Yeah. Through Muhammad? <laughs> through the government? No. No. Through parents? No. no, through who? Through Jesus Christ. Now, I love this word, the little three letter word, all. You know what all means in the Greek? So here's what this means. This is the implication and application of this message tonight. Whatever you're going through in life, in Christ, you're more than a conqueror. I got one hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me say this is my problem. Regardless of what you're going through in life, regardless of the storm, regardless of the trial, regardless of the difficulty, and I can see it. There's someone in the room that needs to hear this. Because the devil has a way of speaking lies to us. And we have a way of actually believing them. That, you know what? It works for everybody else, but not for me. God will heal everybody else tonight, but not me. God will deliver everybody else, not me. No. In all things, we. Now, we plural, right? Yeah. teach you some rhetoric. That's all of us. Not just the pastors. This just doesn't work for the pastors. It works for all of us. We're more than conquerors through who? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Romans 8 31. Because Christ is victorious, we can ask this question. Well, golly, you almost hear Paul say, Well, golly, if God be for us, man, who can be against us? Some of us grew up in the 90s watching. The Chicago Bulls back when they were good. Remember that? <laughs> little little player, Michael Jordan. You know, if I could be on that team, I'd be on Just give me Mike. You can have the field. Everybody else in the NBA, just put me on Mike's team. And guess what's going to happen? We're going to win. tonight or tomorrow or a year from now or 15 years from now or 75 years from now. If you've got Jesus on your team or if you're on better yet, team Jesus, guess what? We got this thing. We win. And I discovered something. Because remember as a little boy, I like to win. I hated to lose. And I thought, you mean to tell me I can be on a winning team every day of my life? In every situation of my life, sign me up for that team. And, and Jesus said, come on, boy. Let's do it. Welcome to Team Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on now. We get on Jesus' team. And here's what uh, the Apostle John had to say about that. First John 4, 4. When you're on Jesus' team, uh, he gets inside you. Greater is he who lives in you than he who what? Lives in the world. Or we could say it this way. Greater is the one that's in you than the one coming against you. Hallelujah. Somebody need to hear that. Amen. Some of us got some stuff tonight coming at us. Some of us got some silly stuff coming at us. Some of us got some difficult stuff coming at us. Come on now. I know but I can see it in your faces. And you know what you need to hear tonight? It doesn't matter what's coming at you. If you're on Team Jesus and He's on you and you're in Him, guess what? It's a fixed fight, honey. It's just a matter of time before that enemy, what? 
goes down in defeat because Jesus doesn't do anything but win. Amen. So when we're on Team Jesus, guess what? We win every time. Amen. We win every time. Now here's the key. Here's what happens. This is what the devil tries to do. He tries to get you to what? Get off Team Jesus. Doubt Jesus. Right? Stop coming to church. Stop praying. Stop reading the word. Stop confessing. Stop fasting. Some of us have been fasting all week. Have an enemy who won't tell us anything. Come on. And if you if you press into this thing and you say, you know what? I'm not letting you go. Like Jacob, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Well, here's what you say. I'm not letting you go until you heal me. I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I'm not going, I'm not going out of here until you give me that wisdom. I'm not leaving until you what? Until you prosper me. Until you heal me. Come on now. We gotta get a hold of Jesus and not let him go. That's what we're to do in life. Philippians 4 13 is not on the screen, but you all know it. We can do all things through who? Here it is again, through Christ. Who gives us strength. Amen. This is just this is just warming up. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this. You're an overcomer. That's who you are. You are an overcomer. You are a champion. Child of God, you are a conqueror. You are the victor over that thing that's coming against you in life right now. Yeah. It is who you are through Christ. Not by yourself, not in your all your wisdom and knowledge and all this stuff that the world tries to get us to think it. It's not, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Come on in. It's who we are. We're all of these things through Jesus. That's why God wants you and I to live the victory. It's the standard, see? Anything less than living beneath that standard is living beneath our God-given rights as children of God, as heirs of the King. Amen? Yeah, we got to know who we are. Because if we don't know this, then here's the point. If we can't live, if we don't know that we can live the victorious life, then like Pastor Mike said last night, there's no way we're going to be a victorious church. There's no way we're going to be the glorious church of Jesus Christ in the earth. Because he's taking us out. So we got to know who we are. Deuteronomy 28, uh, 1 through 2, says these words. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today. The Lord your God, here, here it is, your position, will set you high. That's the victor's chair. You know, in the Olympics, they got podiums, different levels, right? The top guys up here, two, three. They're just three. Yeah, gold, silver, bronze. So, so we're the gold. Every time, in every situation, in every circumstance in life. The Lord will set you high above all the nations on the earth, and these blessings will come on you and accompany you. Now watch this conditional clause. If you obey the Lord your God. Only those in relationship get the blessing. Those outside of the relationship get the curse. Now, uh, for those of you taking notes, here's some homework. What you need to do tomorrow or sometime this weekend is you need to read the entire chapter of Deuteronomy 28. Write that down. Deuteronomy 28. It's real simple. You think you're going to remember. You won't. You'll be out here. Before you get the first book, what chapter is that? <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through, let me tell you exactly, 1 through 14, describes 14 blessings that come upon God's children when we live for the Lord, when we connect ourselves with Team Jesus. 14 blessings. One of those blessings is victory. Okay. Don't have time to read it. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Verses 15, I think, through the rest of the chapter. Like 80 some verses later, whatever. There are six, please listen to this. There are 64 curses for those who don't. 14 blessings come on those people who serve and love the Lord. 14 promises. And there are 64 curses that come on people who don't serve the Lord. Read Deuteronomy 28 and then open the newspaper tomorrow. 
and go, oh my gosh, there it is, the blessing and the curse, the blessing and the curse, the blessing and the curse. And it all comes down to what? Team you're affiliated with. Team Jesus or team devil, right? That leads me to say this, my friends, all these promises are great. Thank God for them, but here's the reality. You and I have an enemy. We do. We have an enemy uh, who would rather kill us than look at us. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief, that is the devil, comes only but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life and that more abundantly. Our enemy is identified by Jesus, amen, right here, as the devil, and the devil is your adversary, my adversary, our church's adversary. If you think the devil likes this church, or Grace Fellowship with the tab, you got another thing coming. Our enemy is the devil, and he is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, let me make this very simple. You got to be highly educated to miss this. That means you're so intellectual, God can't talk to you. This is so simple, but people miss it. The devil is out to kill you. Now that was hard, <laughs> deep. God's out to bless you. The devil's out to make you sick. Oh boy. Jesus is here to heal you. Amen. The devil's out to steal every dollar you have made and money you haven't made. It's called debt. Jesus is out to prosper you financially so you can be a blessing to people. Amen. Did you see how easy this is? God is good. All the time, and the devil is bad. All the time, all the time, all the time. I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> devil is bad, Pastor David. God is good. Amen. Amen. It's just that simple. Now here it is. That seems pretty black and white. Amen. I mean, it's just like negative and positive magnets. Yep. This is this is so easy. A child can get this. But it's amazing how we've messed this thing up in church. We've justified sickness. We've justified poverty. We've just, I mean, we've justified. Well, God, God, God made me sick. So, what? I mean, we've heard it all, haven't we? I mean, we have heard it all and then some. People trying to make excuses for God. But all they got to do is just stay on Team Jesus. It's just the first quarter, honey. All right? There's three more quarters. Let God have some time in your life. He's going to work it out. All right? Somebody say amen. 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 The Apostle Paul says, uh, says of our enemy, Ephesians 6 and 12. Our struggle, our battle, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil, where? In the heavenly realms. Now, please note, the Apostle Paul said, our enemy is not anyone or anything in this world. And that's hard, because sometimes the devil works through people, and so we get mad at the person. I know, I forget I, I think it's the person. I know you would never do that. No. But it's the devil working through the person. Come on. Right? Okay? It's a, it's a spiritual battle, not a physical battle. It's an unseen fight, not a physical fight. So what does that mean? That means this. That we must employ spiritual weapons to win a spiritual war. We can't fight the devil in natural terms and using physical, physical, uh, physical things, all right? So our weapons must be spiritual. And we've been given lots of weapons. That's a whole other series of messages of spiritual warfare, weapons, and all that stuff. But, but we have an enemy, and our enemy is fought in the realm of the spiritual. And the good news is, guess where, guess where God lives? He's already in the spiritual. 
and, uh, and, and, and we're in the natural, and we can receive these things in victory in the natural through him. Now, Apostle Peter, let's go on to Peter real quick. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, write this down. Identifies the devil. Again, he says, your enemy, my enemy, the devil. See, the devil's got horns peeping. The devil <laughs> prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So the, so the devil, so the devil is roaming around looking for someone to devour. All right, so how big is He's what? Apparently in our prayer room. Can't get him. Well, he's, he's strong in prayer. He, he's on Team Jesus. Can't, I want to pick on him. He, he might. Oh, there, there. Right. Now watch this. I love this. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Looking for something to devour. Resist him, standing firm in what? The faith. Right? Faith is a victory. We stand firm in the faith. We do warfare in the faith. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. In other words, brother and sister, I know you got a tongue tonight. I know you do. And you think you're the only one in the world that has been there. There are people all across this room tonight that the devil's been there. There's people all across this world that you're not the only one going through some stuff, is what Paul said. Okay, but watch this. Here's the point of this passage. Note the Apostle Peter said of our enemy, the devil, that he roams around like a roar. Boy, that's an important word. In other words, Peter is telling us, our enemy is not a roaring lion. He is only pretending to be one. Our enemy is a tiny little kitty cat. And you know what he sounds like? Ew. Amen. 
He came to depress the depressor. He came to put sickness back on, I guess, the sicker. <laughs> yeah, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Acts 10, 38 says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around doing good. That's our God. Our God doesn't do bad. He does good. And healing who? Just some? Just, you know, he picks and chooses who he heals or who he delivers. No, he heals all. And all means all. You're learning Greek. Healing all who were under the power of God the Father because God was trying to teach him a lesson. Well, I've heard that one. God's trying to teach me a lesson, Pastor Tim. Don't pray for my healing. I know you have a healing anointing. God's trying to teach me something. Well, you're that little <laughs> God has to take you to the cancer center? That's not God, honey. No. Come on now. People, I'll tell you what, I've heard it all. Where was I? Acts 10 for all. Yeah. All healing all who are under the power of, here it is, the devil. Because God was with him. See, the source again of everything evil, everything bad, is the devil. The source of everything good is God. It's black and white. Can't make it any more simpler than that. So we, when stuff happens in our lives, we need to recognize the source of the problem. And then we go to the source that can solve it. It's just that easy. It's just, you know, God can decide how he's going to do it and get it done in your life. But we need to stop fighting God. We need to go back like the children of Israel and rely on God. Trust in God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, here's the good news. Jesus, who had authority and power from the Father, gave the same authority and power to us. Is this something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Jesus, who was given authority and power over the devil, Amen. gave the same power, the same authority Amen. to us Amen. so that we can what? Destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Just like he did. Luke 9, 1 through 2, a couple verses. When Jesus had called the twelve together, that's the twelve disciples, he gave them authority and power to drive out all demons, that means every one of them, Hallelujah. and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. Did you see that? So he received power and authority from the Father, and then he gave power and authority to his <coughs> disciples, to his church. And if you read the rest of the, of the story, then they went out and they did what? They did the same works that Jesus did. And they came back and said, we can't believe it. And that, isn't that what they said? They were so amazed. Wow, this is awesome. We've always wanted to stand our ground against sickness. We've always wanted to tell the devil to depart. We just didn't have the power. Amen. But now we've been given power. <laughs> Luke 10, 19 says, I, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, I have given you authority and power. You don't work for it. You don't earn the power of God. You don't earn, you receive it by relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I have given you authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions and to overcome all, there it is again, all the power of the enemy, and nothing will by any means harm you. <coughs> Did you see that? <coughs> yeah. I've given you power and authority to trample on all serpents and all scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Now, why did he say serpents and scorpions? This is why. Well, let's preach. Tell me this a, a number of years ago. Watch this now. Serpents, snakes, right? What do they strike you with? Their head, right? 
their, their venom, the cobra, right? They, they, they attack you with their head, right? What do scorpions attack you with? Their tails, right? They, they, they poison you, they harm you with your tail. What's Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, I have given you authority and power over the devil from his head to his tail. Amen. Oh, and everything you can Yes to hell. Yeah, 
They're saying yes to depression. They're saying yes to the pain. They're saying yes to the to the discouragement. They're saying yes to come on now. And you know what we need to do? We need to resist the devil and say, hell no. Get thee out of here, Satan. Come on now. And he'll flee from us. Hallelujah. So when sickness comes knocking on your door, when discouragement, depression, come on now. Rejection. You know what we need to do? I'm preaching my sermon already. We just need to say, hell no. Shut the door. Don't let the devil in. Come on now, that'll preach. Yeah. We say yes to this, and we say yes to that. No, 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 no. Draw a line in the sand. Remember who you are. You're an overcomer. You're a victor. You're a champion. In every area and arena of your life. It's who you are. In Christ. In Christ. Not by yourself. But in Christ, that's who we are. That's why, my friends, we're to live the victorious life. Anything less than victorious life is living beneath our means. It is. Don't do it. Don't do it. In closing, let me remind you, we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Romans 8, 37, in and in all things, we, the children of God, are more than conquerors through Christ. More than conquerors over cancer. More than conquerors over leukemia. More than conquerors over diabetes. More than conquerors over <clears throat> filling the blank. Yes. We're more than conquerors. That means your situation, my friends, tonight. You are more than a conqueror. You're the victor. You're the overcomer yeah, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. In every area of your life. Amen. And our response is this. Thanks be to God. Yes. Who gives us freely of His grace. We certainly don't deserve it. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remind, remind us once again, right? 2 Corinthians 13 8. All the way back to the beginning of this message. The people of Judah, the people of God, were victorious <coughs> because they relied on the Lord. Will you rely on the Lord in your life? Every situation that the enemy brings to you, just rely on the Lord. Just, just keep leaning on Jesus. And it's just a matter of time he's going to work that thing out. He'll work it out. And we rest in the meantime. We, we, just, we just have peace. Uh, there was a situation last night. Remember what it was doing last night when we left here outside? It was raining. It was pouring to beat the man. All the way home, back to the booms and all. It just poured on. And there's a reason it did. The reason is because I told it not to rain. From what time to what time? Four to seven. Four to seven o'clock. This man right here, our praise and worship leader, who led praise and worship tonight, aren't you grateful he was here? Yes. He had a ball game last night. It was scheduled to pour where he was supposed to be. And he texted us, said, listen, if we get rained out, it's going to be rescheduled for tomorrow night. I can't lead praise and worship. I said, hell no. <laughs> And how many innings did you get into the game? All seven. All seven. <laughs> and it's here tonight. We can sing the presence of the Lord. Why? Because the devil scheduled a storm. See, the devil scheduled a storm in your life. And you need to decide. Are you just going to let the storm clouds roll into your life and mess it up and roll out? Or are you going to stand there and say, No, I'm claiming my victory, my authority, my power yeah. over the devil. And anything he brings into my life, I'm saying hell no to. And anything God wants to bring into my life, anything good God wants to do in my life, anything perfect that the Father wants, I'm saying hell and yes to. Yes. You want to bless me with healing? Yes. You want to bless me with joy? Yes. You want to bless me with victory? Yes. You want to bless me with deliverance? 
Yes. You want to bless me with a million dollars? Yes. Come on, man. <laughs> he can do it. God can do it. Proverbs 21, 31. <coughs> Victory rests with the Lord. Victory rests with the Lord. Victory's waiting for us. All we got to do is just get on Team Jesus. And don't get off. And just say, you know what? I'm with you till I see you either in death or I'm raptured. And from this day forward, let's draw a line of sand, can we? Just go ahead. You got your, just draw a line. Just right here. Just, this is it. Draw a line. I ain't going back. I'm not going back to depression. I'm not going back to defeat. I'm not going back to discouragement. I'm not going back to none of them. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Remember back here, so let's do this. Everybody look over your shoulder. Come on, man. Look over whatever shoulder you got. Left, right. All right? All right, now look forward. Look at good old Pastor Tim. That's the last time in the name of Jesus you're looking back. That's it. That's it. Victorious from here on out. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We're seeing people heal of cancer. We've seen two people, one being my mother, another one in the, in, in the church, supernaturally healed. Yes, hallelujah. Boom. Why? Because we said, hell no. It ain't happening. This is not happening. We're seeing great things. And you know what we should? That's what Pastor Mike's message was all about. Anything less than the glorious church is living beneath our means. Yes, amen. Amen. It's who we, he, he paid too high a price. Yes, hallelujah. Our Lord paid too high a price for us yes. to live beneath our means. It would be amen. like my children. My, my children, they're blessed. Yes. They, we, uh, I could take another hour talking about the blessings that God has blessed my family with. It would be like my children say, well, you know, Daddy, you pay too high a price, and I really don't want to impose on you. So I'm going to live out uh, under a, a little tent in, 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 in like the, the backyard. And I'm just going to eat nuts and berries. When, when I built, literally, we built a big house for them to live in. Closets jam-packed with too many clothes. <laughs> Pantry, jam packed with food. Come on now. Yes. And I, it would offend me, it would hurt me after paying that price for the house, for the clothes, for the bed, for the sheets, for them to live out in the backyard as paupers. And I would say, Come in. I, I give this to you because I love you. See, why does, why does, why does God want to save us? Heal us, deliver us, bless us. Here it is. It's real simple. He loves you. Amen. And he paid the price so that you don't have to pay anything. It's a gift. Amen. My children have never once paid me for anything. They shouldn't have to. I'm the parent, right? It's all it's all gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we serve a heavenly father. We're his sons and daughters. All you have to do is come here. If my, if my children want to go someday, they just say, you know, uh, Daddy, or they don't say Daddy, they say Mommy. <laughs> I'm hungry. Right? If they, they need money to come to Daddy, Daddy needs money. And I give it to them. How sad it would be when God's made all the provision for every area of our lives and we live out in the backyard and we don't ever come to them. They can rest with the Lord. All you have is come to the Lord. All you gotta do is come to Lord. So I know many of you, I know it's just why you've got a need tonight. We're gonna open up these offers here in just a little bit. And, and I can't make it, but if you want to come forward and I'll pray with you, I would love to pray with you. And I believe God's gonna work miracles tonight, deliverance tonight, whatever you need tonight, I would encourage you not to take that door before receiving it. Yeah, it's now. Now is the time. Second Corinthians 6 2, write that down. Now is the time, God says, of my favor. Now is the time or the day of my salvation. 
Well, God's going to heal me tomorrow. Well, okay. If you want to wait till tomorrow, that's fine. That's your choice. But guess when you wake up tomorrow? It will be now. The future, you never do get to go into your future, by the way. It never gets to go back to your past. We live in the eternal present. It's always now. So if you want to postpone your healing and your joy and your deliverance and your peace till tomorrow, be my guest. I've decided, you know what? Why wait till tomorrow when it's now then? Why can't I just, let's just do it right now. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. Resurrection, life giving, devil stomping, disease extracting power is in us. Amen. Is in us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ to destroy and to minds and dismiss every work of the devil in our lives. We give you thanks, sir. And we give you our praise. We give you our worship. Yes. It's the only thing we can do because we can't earn it. So we give you all the praise. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, right now to move. Stretch forth your hand, Holy Ghost. Perform miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of your servant Jesus here tonight. Because the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. If you look, please stand.